and that is the biggest mistake that I ended up making as well. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new here, my name is Arham and I'm a third year medical student at the University of Oslo in Norway. Now in this video, I want to talk to you guys about the three main things that I wish I knew during the first year of my med school. The goal with this video is to share my freshman year experiences or mistakes as many may call them in order to make sure that you guys who are watching this video might be aware of some of the common mistakes and so that these can be avoided. Another point to be noted is that different med schools have different semester structures. Some teach basic sciences like biochemistry or cell biology whereas other med schools might focus a bit more on other courses like anatomy and physiology already during the first year. So that means that freshman year experiences may vary greatly between institutions. So I'm going to break down this video into three parts. The first thing I'll be talking to you guys about is how trying to be a perfectionist might just be counterproductive. The second thing I'll be talking to you guys about is the problem with taking loads and loads of notes. And the last thing we will discuss is what I feel about attending lectures and how it is completely possible to do well in exams without physically attending every single lecture. A lot of medical students are like overachieving type A personalities. And I know that is a massive generalization, but I found it to be true in a lot of cases. And I wouldn't mind saying that that includes me to a certain extent as well. But first, what exactly is a type A personality? The term type A personality was first introduced in the 1950s by cardiologist Meyer Friedman and Ray Roseman when they were trying to categorize people according to the risk of developing cardiovascular disease based on behaviors. Type A personalities have apparently a higher risk of developing cardiovascular disease, but I'm not really sure how true that is for medical students. Some of the type A personality traits are being competitive or time urgency and the tendency to work super hard in order to achieve success. The problem is that when you first start med school after college, most of us lack the ability to pick and choose what we need to know and discard the rest because everything just seems so important, right? That ends up with us trying to be perfectionists and memorizing everything, or at least trying to memorize everything. And that is the biggest mistake that I ended up making as well. The best analogy I could come up with to explain this is that med school is like an endless ocean of knowledge and you must learn to float on the surface because the deeper you dive, the harder it gets and hence your chances of survival might also get slimmer. This is probably one of the most common mistakes that people make, or as a matter of fact, most students do not even consider this as a mistake. During the first year of med school in Oslo, the major courses that we have are biochemistry, cell biology, some basic immunology, histology, and thoracic anatomy. I, along with all the others I knew, like no exceptions, made loads and loads of notes and documents. I used to feel super productive this way and think, okay, I'm done with all those lectures and all those topics. Now, all I need to do is go back to my notes a few weeks before my exams and read them again and again or reread the notes. Numerous studies have shown how highlighting and rereading notes is not only the most common but also one of the most inefficient and sloppy study methods used by students today. I wish that I had researched a little bit more into the two most effective study techniques, which are active recall and spaced repetition. I started using these two techniques towards the end of my second year, and my exam performance suddenly got to a whole new peak. Not only did I save almost double the amount of time as compared to before, but I also started retaining a lot of that information in my long-term memory, as opposed to previously where I would forget most of the material or information a few days after my exams. I will soon make a complete video about these two techniques and talk about how these can be incorporated in our study regimes. Now, I was one of those loyal students who would wake up early every single morning and physically show up at almost every lecture. That worked out pretty well and I still try my best to attend the maximum number of lectures, uh, especially the ones 
which do not get recorded. The point being that you should absolutely attend as many lectures as possible, but if you can't make it sometimes or just don't feel like doing it on certain days, then that is completely fine as well. Students are used to attending every single class in college, right? But med school is completely different. There's only so much a professor can teach you in a 45 minute lecture and the major chunk of med school is actually self-studying. But keep in mind that it is really smart to use the handouts or the powerpoints from the lectures as they steer the course of your self-study. However, ever since the lockdown, I have personally stopped attending uh, the live sessions of most of my lectures. In this way, I was able to save almost double the amount of time and also increase my productivity by simply going through the lecture recordings. That's a wrap for today guys. I hope you found the video useful so that these mistakes can be avoided by freshies in med school. If you enjoyed the video, then you might also be interested in this video where I bust five common med school myths. If you haven't subscribed already, then please consider doing so. Take care guys, I'll see you in the next video. Peace.